What do you do? How do you respond? What do you say when things don't go your way? You know, the true test of character is not displayed when life is great. Your true test of character comes how, with how you respond or it's revealed to you and to other people in moments of crisis. Get back, get back. A lot of times we don't even realize sometimes the issues that we have in us, unresolved things that we have in us until the pressure is on. You know, when, when, when wine is being made, uh, enormous amount of pressure is applied to the grape because, and the grape really is completely demolished. There's nothing left of the grape, but what comes out of it is so much better. You don't, you no longer have the grape, but you have juice. So the juice is something that's even better. It's more refined. And so that's how it is when we go through situations in life. We feel like we're being crushed and demolished. But the Bible says that unless a seed falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. And so when that seed dies, it then can yield all of its potential because before the seed is 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 just a seed it's just one seed but when that seed dies or when it dies to itself when it's buried in the ground and when when the outer shell is opened up and it receives nutrients from the soil and from and the sun from the rain the rain and the sun it can produce something so much greater than itself and so i want to encourage you guys today that it may feel like it's not working Come on, listen, it may feel like you're being crushed, but if you yield it to God and complete and absolute surrender and submission, he will birth out of you something bigger than what you ever could have been and something that has never existed before. When that seed falls to the ground and dies to its own hard, stubborn will, and allows itself to be broken under the mighty hand of God. Not broken to be destroyed, but broken to be made again anew. When that happens, a tree, a tree emerges from that one seed. And now that tree can provide fruit, leaves, covering, shade, home for the birds. But all of that was in the seed, guys. It was in the seed, but it needed to be brought out. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It's how you respond to it. And it's how you surrender to God in it. You don't give up or you don't give in to the press pressure. You give in to God in the pressure. I'm gonna say that again. You don't give in to the pressure, but you give in to God in the pressure so that he can take all of those things as you surrender it in prayer and in intercession. He can take all of those things and work it together for your good and for his glory. Because it really is about his glory. It really is for his glory. And anything that's for his glory is going to be for our good. It's not what happens. It's how we respond to the situation. Again, that and that's what God is looking at. That's what he's looking at. He's saying, okay, how are they reacting? And he already knows. Listen, God already knows what's going on in here. We sometimes don't know because the Bible says the heart can be very deceitful. And so sometimes things have to happen to flush stuff out. The purifying process with gold, you know, the heat is turned up. And so all the impurities then rise to the top and then they get skimmed away so that what's left is pure and worthy to be used. We want to be vessels that are fit for the master's use. So we have to stay on the potter's wheel. And so when there's a crack, sometimes we don't even know there's a crack. Sometimes we have a blind spot. And so when things happen, we're able to see, wait a minute, okay, the way I responded is an indication something's going on here. And that in the pressure, in the pressure, I need to yield to God so that he can make me anew again, so that I can be a vessel fit for his use. And so 
how you respond to disappointments. How do you re respond when things don't go your way? It's a true indication of your character and your level of maturity. And God is watching all of that. He's more concerned about what's going on in us. Because when we get to a place of spiritual depth and maturity to a certain degree or level that that is pleasing to him, then he begins to release things to us that were beforehand withheld. Okay? It's like uh, the Bible talks about how a child, a child who has an inheritance, when that child is young or immature, they're, they're equal to the servants. They don't have access. They, they may have the right to have these things, but they don't have access because of a lack of maturity and depth. There is, there is no, there is no trustworthiness in the person yet. They're being formed. Once the father can see and is convinced that the child is trustworthy and credible, and responsible and mature and will take what the father has worked to create and maintain it, sustain it, grow it and expand it, then it's released. So a lot of times we, God is looking at how we're going to respond to situations so that he can judge what we're capable of receiving next. And only he knows, he is the righteous judge. Only he knows. Please do not allow setbacks disappointments, delays to cause you to abort what God is doing in you. Because what God wants to do in you is going to be connected to what God can do through you. And what God will eventually do through you will be so much bigger than who you are right now, what you're doing right now, the impact that you have right now. You need to sow with your future in mind. And so if you find yourself in a situation where things are not going your way and you find yourself getting ready to pop, right, to explode, don't say a word. Do not say a word because words connect. The words are containers and they release. And so sometimes some of the most powerful things that have been spoken have been spoken out of anger. Why? Because anger is a force. It is a force and it fuels that word and it gives that word substance, okay? So don't say anything. How you respond is a reflection of your character. It's a reflection of who you are and who you've become and who you are becoming. And so if you don't like how you sound, if you don't like the person you see when you're angry, don't be condemned. Don't be condemned. Take that as an opportunity to say, okay, Lord, what's going on in me? I'm ready. I'm ready for you to show me. Because sometimes we're not ready. Sometimes we're not ready for God to show us things. You know, Jesus said to his disciples, there's so much I want to tell you guys. There's so much. I can imagine. I can imagine what he had to say. But I can only imagine, I should say. And he said, there was so much I want to tell you, but you can't, you can't handle it. You don't even have the capability to understand or receive or rightly divide what I share with you. But there will come a time when my spirit comes and my spirit lives in you and he renews you and transforms you. Then you will be able to receive and then I will be able to tell you through my spirit. Sometimes we're not ready to really see those areas in our lives that are flawed and they're, that are our blind spots because we can't handle it. We really just can't. It, it, it would be too much. It would be too much. You know, when you're dealing with someone who's gone through a severe trauma, you know, you have to be really careful when you're walking them through the healing process because sometimes there are certain areas they just can't talk about. And if you press it, it will do more harm than good. And so God is long suffering. Oh, he's patient. He's kind. And so he waits <laughs> until we can acknowledge, oh, I have a problem there. Oh, okay. I'm a bit of a gossip. Oh, I kind of don't mind my business. Oh yeah. I got some serious issues with envy. I, I don't like it when my friends do well and I'm not, I have a problem with that. And God, I don't like that. 
I don't like what I see. I don't like how I feel because I know that's not you. That's my flesh. That's my pain. That's my hurt talking. And I don't want that. I don't want my hurt to speak for me. I don't want my pain to be my voice. I want to be healed so that I can give voice to the pain and show people what the healing process looks like. But I don't want my pain to be my voice. And so when you get to that point, the Holy Spirit can say, okay, now I can put my finger on this right here because you, you're you not giving in to the pressure, but you're yielding to me in the pressure. And so now... I can peel back the layers and I can show you what's really going on and I can help you get to the root of it and I can speak healing to you and I can bring you to a place where you will not even smell like smoke. I will bring you to a place where every time you think about that ex event or that experience, the sting of it will be gone completely and it will just be a memory that you can pull from to minister comfort and hope and healing to someone else. So guys, that's all I wanted to share. Be encouraged, be blessed, and know that you plan your way, but your steps are ordered by God. And be okay with things not going your way as long as you submit the God who is in control of your life so that he can give you the wherewithal, the wisdom, the strength, and the courage to move in a different path so that eventually you will see the realization of those plans in your life and they'll be for your good and be for his glory. So until next time, have a good one.